This is Julia from the Macedon Public Library, and I'm coming with you today for uh, another book review for the uh, Intermediate School re Recommendations. Uh, the books that I'm using today, there are three books. They're all by the same author. Her name is Sarah Leach. Um, this is the first one called Slug Days. Um, she's Sarah Leach, the author, has worked as a teacher for over 20 years, and uh, when she wrote these books, it was with a very specific purpose. It wasn't just because she had some fun stories uh, to share. But she worked with many children like Lauren, who is the main character in these stories. Um, so we have Slug Days, we have Penguin Days, and then we have Duck Days uh, in that order, one, two, and three. Um, so many, uh, she's worked with children that are like Lauren, the main character, who has autism spectrum disorder, uh, otherwise known as ASD. Uh, and so Lauren, in these stories, uh, is sharing the way she experiences the world and how she experiences it differently, how she thinks and feels, maybe different than some of us, uh, and giving us an idea of what that would be like. Um, so this is this is a, so I read Slug Days first as I was getting as I was processing it, just so we could share it at the library. And it just caught me because I've worked with kids before and I've been a kid and I've I've helped raise a kid. Um, and so this some of the way that Lauren expresses things, um, I really appreciated. I'm gonna read you some. So again, this is from Slug Days, which is the, the first book. Um, and this is Lauren's perspective. So she gets on the school bus and she said, Dan and Sachi were sitting in my seat. Um, and I squished between them. Hey, Dan said, get out two to a seat, Lauren. So she's pushing in between them. Mom told me when people look upset, you should try to make them feel better. Dan had a frown on his face and he was using an angry voice. So I figured he must be upset. So I gave him a kiss to make him feel better. Because if you give someone a kiss, like your mom or dad, it can help them feel better. He pushed me. I pushed him back. He pushed me harder. Stop it, Sachi said. Lauren, go find another seat. So it just kind of goes on. So she, she interpreted from his face and from his tone of voice that he was upset and she was just trying to help. But it didn't help because he didn't want to be kissed. That's generally not something you should do to someone unless you ask their permission, ask if they would like a kiss. Okay, so then this is another. So she talks, so the first part of the day is not, a, it's not a good morning for her and she feels like a slug. So that's why this was called Slug Days. So uh, a little bit further on, which is chapter four, she said, today was a butterfly day. I didn't flip my lid at school once and Mrs. Patel, who's their teacher, put a sticker in my agenda. This was my sixth Sticker, which meant mom took me to get ice cream. Mrs. Patel thought I listened at school. Uh, oh, yes, and to get the sticker. And so mom thought I listened to get the ice cream. They were both wrong. When we arrived at the ice cream store, I ran to the counter. Mom thought I took a long time deciding on my ice cream choice because there were so many flavors. She was wrong about that too. I loved the ice cream store because of the goo on the counter. There was a groove at the ice cream counter where people's ice cream dripped and they couldn't clean it out. I ran my fingers through the gooey bits while I pretended to decide on a flavor. The bits were squishy and stretchy like rubber bands. I love to see how far I could stretch them. So here's a picture of that. You can see kind of the, the edge of the counter there where sometimes they can't keep it clean enough. So she was feeling the texture it was interesting to her. Uh, what's it going to be, Lauren, mom asked cookie dough? No, I said, pulling my fingers through the goo. Double chocolate chip? I shook my head and moved down the counter, dragging my fingers in that groove. So she's moving her fingers as she does this. Time to decide, mom said. I moved another step down the counter, but this time my fingers stayed behind. Uh-oh, I said, tugging them. What's wrong, mom asked. My fingers are stuck. Mom closed her eyes and breathed in and out through her nose. Once I told her, huffing well, once I told her, having like a bear wouldn't solve her problem. She didn't like that very much. Pull harder, she said. So here's her fingers that are kind of stuck in that goo. <clears throat> I tried. They're still stuck. My insides started to go all wobbly. What if I can't get them out? I don't want to live in the ice cream store forever. It smelled good and there weren't any teachers or mean kids, but I wouldn't be able to eat any ice cream because my fingers were stuck. Mom yanked my arms. My fingers popped out of the groove. Ow, I yelled, but the hurt didn't last long. Long, stretchy globs of pralines and cream dangled from my fingers. Pralines and cream it is, I said, two scoops. So she chose what kind of ice cream to get by what kind of ice cream was st 
stuck in a groove. So um, that's, I think that's probably not a way that a lot of people choose what flavor of ice cream to get, but that was her perspective. So this is, this is little Lauren. Um, it's, and in this book, she is in second grade. Um, so the books can be reassuring to someone who also has autism spectrum disorder. Uh, they could also be helpful for people who know of individuals who might perhaps have have this uh, ASD. So like a friend or a neighbor or sibling, uh, somebody in your family, a classmate maybe. And so, so this might help you understand that other people can be like you. And also that people who aren't like you sometimes just need a little like, extra help. So the books also go into some strategies um, that Lauren learns from her parents and from um, that she has a teacher that she works with especially in the school uh, that help her give some, um, some strategies, some things to try to make her life go a little smoother um, so she can feel more comfortable. So in Slug Days, in that first book that I was just reading from, um, she talks about either having a squishy ball that she keeps with her um, or um, also refers to in the other books too, having an eraser. Um, like one of those separate, not the eraser on the end of a pencil, but the other, the loose eraser, just to keep it to have something to squish, something um, to hold in her hand to help her think about that instead of things that are uncomfortable for her. Um, and one of uh, she, the teacher that she works with that's special at the school talks about arm distance talking. So holding your arm out, whoa, really close to the camera. Um, that's a good distance to be away from people because sometimes, um, we like, we get a little closer to people than other people may, be inter may like us to be. So that keeping that in mind of having the arm distance talking to, to stay, certainly now with, uh, with the coronavirus, we're staying longer than that because that's not three feet or six feet away. Um, but you know, the pandemic will end. Um, so that was again, another strategy she, she learned. So that's just the, that was the end of her second grade year. She meets a, uh, a new student comes in that, comes from, an, moves from another country um, to become, and becomes a friend of hers. Uh, her name is Irma. She comes back in the third book. But meanwhile, in the second book, which is called Penguin Days, um, it's, she's going to be in a wedding by, in a family member. So they have to take a trip. Uh, they take a trip in a car. Uh, apparently there's, and previously, not in the books, um, she was, uh, they, the family took a trip on an airplane and they, Lauren found it very difficult to be on an airplane that's very loud and a lot of people together. Um, so I can see how that would be overwhelming. Um, so the, one of the, the strategies, one of the helping things that she learns in Penguin Days is square breathing. And I just wanted to talk about, give you an example of what that is as a way to kind of deep breathe and to kind of calm the inside of your body while your mind is, is dealing with something that's uncomfortable. And so when you do square breathing, uh, it's generally to account to four. And so you breathe in for the count of four, which is still like you're drawing a square. So you go breathe one, two, three, four, one side of the square. Then you hold your breath for one, two, three, four, another four. Count of four down is breathing out, one, two, three, four. And then you go back the other side of the square to hold the breath again. So you're breathing in, holding, breathing out, Breathe, uh, sorry, yeah, breathing out and then holding again. So, probably faster than four because I'm hurrying up. Um, that, that, that's a good skill. That's a good strategy for anybody to learn. Uh, you might've heard of square breathing before. So that's one of the things she learns in England days when she has to be in, in a family member's wedding and she has to wear an uncomfortable dress and she has to be with cousins that she hasn't seen in a very long time. Um, and she has to be around big cows and things like that. Um, things that are, that are not in her comfort area. And so she uses the square breathing to help her. And then the, in the last book, which is called Duck Days, um, she's in third grade and she uh, is with her friend Irma again, who's still there. Um, and she um, learns to go with the flow. So that's one of the biggest things that comes through in the story. And they talk about making a way, like going with the flow. So following the water, um, but it's also kind of acting like a duck. So she's having trouble when she, as she's learning to ride a bike without training wheels. And um, a younger person tells her to go with the flow also can be like a duck and don't let the, the how the water will 
roll off of a duck. It will fall off of a duck. Uh, when they go down in the water and they come up, it then they're dry again. Um, and using that for if somebody says hurtful words, to kind of let those words roll off your back, just like water rolls off of a duck. Um, and then also uh, reiterates again, looking at faces so that you can see what the face is trying to tell you. So looking at the feelings of emotions, uh, what it looks like on somebody else's face. Um, so I highly recommend them. Uh, I, and I just love that it's written from the perspective of Lauren, this young girl who, who's dealing with all of these things. And as she's trying to um, just get along in the world and how her friends and her family also are learning to get along in the world alongside her. Um, I wanted to read in the back of them, there's, a, there's author notes. Often there are author's notes in the back of books. Um, and it talks about how uh, like millions of children around the world, Lauren has ASD, also known as Autism Spectrum Disorder, which is an umbrella term that has included Asperger since 2013. She experiences the world differently than other people. She has trouble reading facial expressions and tone of voice and understanding jokes. These differences can make life challenging for people living with AXD and for the people around them. However, it is these very differences that make them unique. Uh, so that's that one. The second one, they each say a little something a little bit different. And the middle one, um, the author says, as I wrote this, I thought about myself as a child. I never liked it when adults laugh. So she's also around other, oh, the cousins that she doesn't really know of, but also so her aunts and uncles that she doesn't really know because she doesn't see them often. They maybe didn't understand her quite enough and um, they might've laughed at her and she didn't get the jokes. It hurt not to be included, and I would have always chosen uh, a pug once you have a wearing dress. Jenna wasn't wearing a scratchy dress. Um, so that was that about the wedding. And then at the end of Duck Days, uh, it says, uh, we need people like Lauren in our world. We also need people like Irma, who is her friend, her best friend, and like Lauren's parents, who all love and appreciate her for who she is. Um, so I found these very uplifting, very interesting. Um, if you if you know somebody uh, or perhaps are someone or have a little, it, it, because it's an autism spectrum disorder, there's, there's, you know, people are across a whole spectrum. It's like on a, like a rainbow, you know, you have people that are closer at the edges and people closer in the middle. Um, and so maybe you might read these and say, wow, I kind of, I really get that. Maybe I, I, I kind of understand where she's coming from or, Boy, that's kind of like my friend. I wonder if I can help my friend being a certain way. Um, so I really, I appreciate these. I, and I started reading these because we're looking at animal books for our summer reading. Uh, and I, the idea of having, feeling like an animal. So like she felt like a slug. A slug is just kind of blah and slow and not drawing attention. I just don't want anybody to look at me. And then um, being a penguin, uh, people like penguins. Well, they talk about the penguin suit. So, so the ring bearer, in, she has to wear a scratchy purple dress for the wedding. But one of her cousins, uh, one of, uh, he's has to wear like a little suit, like a tuxedo. He calls it a penguin suit. And she thought, oh, I want to dress up like a penguin. It's like, well, it's not, that's not what I mean. She didn't understand that, that terminology of a penguin suit. Um, but so it's kind of like putting on another suit kind of pretend to be something else for a while. So that, and then in the duck days, again, she's going with the flow with the water and also learning to be a duck and letting things just go off of her back. Um, so, so that's awesome. That's just perfect for summer. So those are my recommendations. Um, I hope you might wanna give them a chance. Uh, we have all three of them here at the Mastin Library and happy reading. All right, thanks, bye.